So back on to tablet reviews and unboxings here. I have the Asus ZenPad 310. Now it's a bit of a confusing name. It's also the Z500 and M. Pick this one up here, as you can see from Amazon by the box. So get it unwrapped here. So this has a, a hexa-core CPU in there. It's a MediaTek. It's got a premium design. It's apparently very thin, very light as well, about 430 grams. So very interested to check this one out. It also supports a stylus and Qualcomm Quick Charge 3, although you have to buy an additional certified charger for that. So nice sealed box there. Looks very similar to the Zen Phone Ultra that I reviewed, this same exact style to it there. And here is the stylus. So the stylus there actually comes with a second nib there that you can put in there. Now this has a battery in there that apparently can last for 150 hours. So I'll get the uh, tablet unboxed first. So this is all completely unscripted. Straight up a proper unboxing. I have not looked at this before, so let's have a look at it. Oh, that actually, yeah, that is quite light and does look quite nice there. So you can see they've just got a few specs on there. But actually, just propaganda, really. The high res audio that's got DTS. And I get it out of this protective plastic it's got. Wow, so there we go. This thing does feel really, really light. You see along the bottom there, we've got uh, two Torx screws in there, the Type-C port there for charging and data and rear firing speakers. Now the screen is fully laminated. So on the right-hand side, we have metal power on and volume up and down buttons. On the top, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This looks to be the only bit of plastic actually that's on the body that I can see so far. Is this part here that will be for the antenna reception. Now it does have wireless AC. There is of course micro SD card support too, but unfortunately no display out on this secondary microphone there. And there is the tray there to insert your SIM cards. Uh, sorry, your micro SD cards, not SIMs. And on the back we have the logo there and just some text down the bottom saying ZenPad and a rare 8 megapixel camera. Build of it feels really good. Now this has a very, very similar finish to the Zenfone 3 Ultra that I reviewed about a month ago. So I'll look and see what else is in the box. And oh, I can't seem to get this open. What is that meant to be? Ah, it's a stand. They've included this cardboard stand here. That's Okay, that's different. I have never seen that before. Why you'd want a cardboard stand, but it's got like a little at least a piece of rubber in there. So there's the uh, tool there, of course, for the, the micro SD card slot. There's just the guarantee. And it comes with the white cable, which matches the white tablet, Type-C. So the charger is only rated to 5 volts, 2 amps, so it's not a quick charge three charger even though it does support that you need to actually buy your own one which is a little bit of a shame that they don't include that but I did read that on the website which was why I was aware of this so open up the stylus here now I hope this is the correct one I'm pretty sure it is though the Z stylus at least Amazon was referring to it as the stylus that is supported on the ZenPad 3S all right so there's the, the spare nib that they give you, and it has a, a rubber tip on there, so eventually that is going to actually wear out, isn't it? So there's some instructions, just outlining what uh, the buttons do on there, the function button, indicator, the cap, and you need to insert a quad A battery. Alright, so I just put the battery in there, and it feels like a quality stylus. Now the tip I said before was... Uh, rubber it is actually just uh, like a hard plastic but eventually I guess that's going to wear out if you're going to be using this stylus a lot so it's a good thing they have included a spare tip in there so it has a function two function buttons there an LED just a status LED telling you if you need to change the battery 
which uh, as mentioned lasts for apparently 150 hours which is a very long time so it's made out of metal but it has like a almost like a rubberized paint coating over the top of it it feels very premium and really nice in hand now it has quite a Samsung feel to it, at least the way the home button, the fingerprint reader there is set up to me that it just looks like older Samsung devices. Now the screen on it of course is a retina screen so it's 9.7 inches that has a resolution of 2048 by 1536. So that it was actually quite quick just getting up to the first screen here. And input method, uh, first setup. I'll just skip along, that should already be in English. I'll connect to my wireless network later on. Terms and conditions. Now one thing I'm actually quite scared of is how much bloatware crap have Azus put on this because they've just been piling on so much. Their Zenfone 3 Ultra just had so much crap on there. So set up fingerprint. I'll just go through this now and see how this works. Okay, so here we go. Fingerprint. So it's the typical deal, you're going to have to place your thumb, your finger on there, whatever you want to use, your index finger or your thumb, and I think you have to do that about 10 times. And that is now set up. Okay, they want to go into register my Zeus account. No, thank you. Oh, they've even got Google Drive on there. There's just so many setup screens. Oh no, that's actually not too bad. Done. Question is now, how much bloatware? Okay, so that screen looks really nice and it looks to be... Actually, I don't know whether that is fully laminated or not. Just looking at it, I do believe it is though. No, that's definitely, yeah, okay, that's fully laminated, which is good to see. There's no big gap in the screen, like what I'm used to with the Chinese tablets that often have that. So they've got, already I can see, just so much crap on here. Like, I mean, they've, they've put Amazon Kindle on there, then you've got all their software, then you've got Google stuff on there. And ah, it even goes over into a second page there. So yeah, they've got Zen everything for you, web storage. It's it's a shame, really, and an embarrassment, really. If I was working for them and I was releasing devices with this much crap on there, I mean, Samsung's doing it. Everyone's doing it, aren't they? They're just pulling it out with bloat. Anyway, let's have a look and see the toggles there. They're uh, rather ugly looking. Not too, well, they're a bit big, of course, been quite large, being a tablet, but it's, it's uh, the DPI they've used, I'm finding it to be quite large here just my first impressions at least so they've got uh, quite a few gimmicky things in there like the power and boost so that's just clearing ram obviously similar to like clean master things like that all right so a quick move over into the system and oh, we've got system updates about so this should be running the latest well not the latest version of course we've got android 7 now but that's only on uh, the google pixel i think at the moment so it's reasonably up to date. So the, the Android uh, security patch level is from July the 1st. Uh, yeah, that should probably be about September. Android version 6.0. So I'll connect up to my internet and I will check out and see if there are any over there updates for this. Uh, we have a few extra things in here. So memory, we can have a look at the memory use. So this does have four gigabytes of memory on there, which is quite good. And the internal storage with all that bloatware, I wonder how large the ROM is. Uh, so we've got 52 gigabytes free. And as mentioned in the beginning of the video, that you can, of course, expand that with the micro SD card slot. So just to confirm that weight, they claim it is 430 grams. And you know what? It is exactly 430 grams. So they haven't faked the weight like some of the manufacturers tend to make it a little bit lighter than it really is. So they claim it is 5.8 millimeters thin. Now it does look really quite thin when you look at it from certain angles because of the bevels along here and that is apparently diamond cut, the nice edge they have on there. But to me, it looks a little bit thicker. So I'm going to have to find that true thickness of it. And that looks to be about 7 millimeters. 
and of course where the camera bump is there that's going to be a little bit more it comes to be 7.1 millimeters so it looks like it's definitely not as thin as they have claimed I don't know where they've got okay so we got 6. 6.6 so where they're measuring that from must be around here that's 5 so they must have taken it from that outer lip to there no, I don't. I can, that's a 6.2, so that's interesting. So I don't know where they're getting that 5.8 millimeters from. So I set up my thumbprint on there to unlock it. See how that works. Okay, uh, you have to wake it first. No, for additional security. Why does it want my pin? Okay, why did that not work? Okay, then it worked. Okay, that is working now. So you have to press down. So it's not too bad. You don't actually really have to wake it first. You can do that in one motion. Or maybe not. There we go. Now you do have to wake it first. So I thought I would compare it to one of the Chinese tablets that I normally review that aren't premium tablets. They're a lot cheaper. Now this here is the Techlast X98 Air 3. And you can see the difference. It's got plastic around here. Although this does have a little bit of plastic and with the glass on the top. But it's a fully laminated display. This is non-laminated. And you can see the thickness difference. This is a lot chunkier. It's a lot heavier. So, so far testing it, the operating system seems to be performing pretty quick and snappy just within the Zen UI that they have. Now, I wanted to have a look at the screen brightness. I noticed that it does have right here, you have an auto brightness, so that will adjust automatically according to what the ambient light sensor is detecting, which is located just right next to the front facing camera right there. If I get rid of that, that is full brightness, which is quite bright. It's looking good. That should be around 300 nits of brightness, but I will test that out and get a proper reading. And that can dim right down there to a very dim level, which will be good for nighttime use. And I do believe it also has a blue light filtered. Also good for nighttime use. So if you're going to be using this uh, reading ebooks and PDFs and things like that, that's going to be very handy. So you're not going to be burning your eyes out and keeping yourself awake at night. So I'm just going to play a quick track here of carbon-based lifeforms to see how the dual firing speakers sound like. Now, obviously, we're not going to get a lot of stereo separation from that. It's a shame that they're not on the top and one on the bottom, or they could have used four speakers with the same configuration at the top, similar to that of the iPad Pro. Okay, they sound not too bad for a tablet. They're not as loud as I've heard. They're definitely not the loudest tablet. I noticed that there's a little bit of distortion there as well. But uh, they are way, way louder than, for example, something like my Techlast X98 Air 3 that I have here that has hopelessly quiet speakers that just have no volume whatsoever. Now, the on-screen keyboard, that seems really responsive. Good to type on, well-spaced out. Not bad, it's going to connect up to my wireless right here. And go over into Chrome. Very quickly, just load up Tech Tablets and see how fast that loads. That didn't take too long, and even though this is quite an image-heavy website, that performance of that seems quite good. And I'll just quickly go into a video here. This has embedded YouTube video, so I wonder if it's going to play that just fine. It is a 4K video, but... So the Xiaomi Mi 5 gets an upgrade. The Mi 5S now has a Snapdragon 8. I haven't experienced any lag... But this is only going to be in 1080p, of course. 
everyone. This is a custom scan that is over Android. Issues now and then you'll notice with the focus. So it's got wireless AC as well, dual band that is good, and Bluetooth 4.2. So the performance of that, that didn't seem to have any stutters or lag there. That was working really well. So a quick look at the stylus. I have noticed that it does have a feature that is very similar to that of the Galaxy Note series. That if you double tap, once the stylus is detected, you can quick bring up this quick launch icon. So you can go straight into the camera, sound recorder, file manager, settings, or write a note. I think this is does a screen capture, and then you can write on that screen capture. And well, that it's actually just gone to the highlighter, so you can highlight text. So that could be handy for some people out there that have taken a screen capture of some text and want to highlight a few key points or something like that. So just bring that back up. Now, oh, it's not working. I need to get out of that. So palm rejection does work. As soon as the stylus is detected, you can see it has like a hover feature. So once you're about, it looks to me, about 10 millimeters away from the screen, that's when the hover feature works and when it's detected. So when that happens, you can see that my finger's doing nothing. As soon as I pull the stylus away, I'm now able to sketch on the screen. And the accuracy of it, it seems reasonably good. I'm just quickly write something there. Now it doesn't feel as good as Wacom styluses or the the N-Trig stylus on my Surface Pro 4 that I had, but it's not too bad and you see it's quite fast there. And you do get various different options here. So you have pen, pencil, airbrush, paint and the included stock application but what I cannot get to work is pressure sensitivity it doesn't seem to be supported with this app even though the stylus apparently does support it if you notice here that if I push down harder I'm not really too sure actually there we go it depends on what you're using so that is working the harder I push the thicker that line is getting so pressure sensitivity there does work it was looking like to me that it wasn't going to work but it seems that it depends on what you're actually using so it seems to only work on the brush it doesn't work on the pencil when I was using that it just seems to be the same kind of line so overall for an Android tablet the stylus seems quite good so far so that's my unboxing there of the Asus ZenPad 3S 10 and the stylus that you can get there's an additional 30 to 40 us i think it was now my first impressions are actually really good i do like what i see here the only thing that i can find that i don't like you probably saw from what i was commenting on was the amount of bloatware that they've just crammed on there it was just ridiculous they put so much on their tech lately and everyone seems to be doing that but i wish they would just lighten things down a little bit because we literally have almost double ups of the same applications we've got the android stuff and then the zen stuff the azu stuff which is really annoying but the build quality of it is just really nice this is definitely premium it's got quick charge 3 speaker sounds okay we have fingerprint security and it is nice and thin but not as thin as they claimed i i can't seem to get that 5.8 millimeters of thickness anyway i'll be back with the full review of this and hopefully around about a week or so, so if you are interested. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel? And I'll see you back with a review.